So it was a it was an English translation of the Quran, right? Okay. English interpretation of the Quran. And uh, I took it home. I put it in my apartment on the bookshelf, and that's where it stayed for a while. For a while, <laughs> yeah, not very long, really, yeah. because I was new to San Francisco, and I had shipped my books from Indiana, Lafayette, Indiana, to my new place of work and my new address, and they hadn't arrived yet. So it wasn't long before I ran out of stuff to read. And one night I was sitting in my apartment in Diamond Heights and there was nothing to read and I look over at the coffee table, it happened to be on the coffee table, and there was a copy of the English interpretation of the Quran. So yes. I picked it up and I thought I would peruse it. Yeah. So yeah. the journey began. The journey began. Did, now tell me this, because did you open it? Some people open the book to look to find contradictions, to look to find discrepancies. At, what, at that point, did you look, was your mind open, was your heart uh, open to the truth, if it was the truth? Do you, you, you get my question? Yes, I get your question. I was very convinced there was no God. So, yeah. I, you know, when I picked it up, I wasn't looking for, searching for anything on yeah. a spiritual level. Uh, I wasn't looking for contradictions. There's no point in that. You know, yeah. I had reasons not to believe in God. I thought they were very, co very compelling reasons. So I wasn't really looking for anything. I just picked it up and out of, I would say at the time, academic curiosity. Just yeah. wanted to see what it was. Academic happens. curiosity. I thought I would read three or four pages, get bored and put it down. Yes. Yeah. You know how it is. Like, I understand. When you have nothing to read, you pick yeah. up a magazine, you leave. But that wasn't the case here. No, it turned out to be a little bit of a surprise. You know, I read the first surah, which essentially is a prayer for guidance. And you don't sort of realize it until you're done. Yeah. And that was a little bit of a... You know, I thought the author was clever. For, for, it's a very short story. Can you, for our uh, viewers who aren't Muslim, can you just, the seven verses, yes. can you sit, translate them in English? Yes. Uh, it goes basically like this. Uh, in the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. So one, it says the most merciful, the most compassionate. Right. This is deep. Right. Because yeah. we as human beings think sometimes, you know, we're merciful, you know, this guy's such an, this is the most merciful. Right. Go on. So right away, emphasis on mercy and compassion. And then it says, all praise be to God, uh, more or less ruler of all worlds. The king. Of all realms. The one who's running the show. Yes, of all that exists. Yes. Uh, the most merciful, the most again, compassionate. Again, reminding, again, people. the most merciful, yeah. most compassionate. Yeah. Uh, praise be to God. Show us the straight path. Yes. Uh, oh, no, no. Uh, you alone uh, we pray to, and uh, you alone we see so help from. You alone do we pray to. Praying to God alone, none of His creation to Him directly, direct right. connection. Right. Yeah. And then, then the next verse is, uh, "Show us the straight path." The master of the day of judgment. Oh, master of the day. Master of that there is a day of judgment right. that we're going to be right. accountable for all of our actions. Right. right. Now, now that part bothered me a little bit. Master of the day of judgment. I thought, now I'm coming back. You know, the emphasis on yes. mercy and compassion is nice. Master of the day of judgment. Okay, this, I think of punishment. Yeah. And then I think, okay, he creates us with all these flaws, and then he punishes us for having them. You know. So, you know, I was a little put off by that. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, show us a straight path. Yeah. You know, the path of those whom you have favored, not those who have uh, gone astray yes. or uh, upon whom is violence or wrath. Yes. Yeah. So, and then you went on to. So it was very interesting. It starts out like a hymn of praise, like a song. Yeah. And. It slips into being a prayer for guidance at the end. Yeah. So I thought the author was very clever because he sort of tricked me into making this prayer for guidance, even though I didn't. Before you even started to come to the book, yeah. right? Or I didn't believe in God. Then you come to the next uh, surah, and it begins Aleph Lam Mim, three Arabic letters, and then it says, "That is the book, literally. That is the book, wherein no doubt is the guidance." Yeah. No doubt in this book. Yeah. Well, it seems to be saying that you know the spirit you just made. This is your answer. Yeah. You know? So I thought the author had a very compelling style of writing. Yeah. And he sort of engages you in a sort of an intellectual conversation. So I, you know, as I was reading the Quran, I was appreciating the author's, let's say, literary genius. You know, even though I didn't know who the author was, and I definitely assumed it wasn't divinely inspired. Uh -huh. And then I come to the 30th verse of the second surah or chapter. And it says, uh, Behold, your Lord said to the angels. So it's a heavenly announcement. I'm about to put a vicerant on her. The Arabic word was Khalifa. I'm yeah. about to put a vicerant of mine, a viceroy, one who acts in behalf of another or represents another. Yeah. Uh, so it's a heavenly election. I'm about to put a viceroy on her. And then the angel said, Will you put there in one who will spread corruption and shed much blood? 
Oh, this is now one of the answers to some of your right. questions. This is my you question. Were, that's your question. Well, the same we, thing the angels are asking. Right. Yeah. Well, we, the angels, celebrate your praises and glorify you. What was the response from the Almighty? Yeah, so, you know, I read that verse. Yeah. And look what they're saying. Will you put human beings on earth to represent you? Well, and they spread tr tremendous corruption and shed much blood. And that's what's going on nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, the angels, celebrate your praises and glorify you and are entirely submissive to you and do exactly what you want, you know, what you want of us. You know, the question is, why would you create this being and put them on earth? Well, we, the angels, you know, <laughs> patently superior and could fulfill that role much better. Yeah. Why would you create humans? when you could just make them angels. Yes. You know, so that took me right back to uh, day one of my childhood. You know, it just reminded me of my entire, my entire life, all the scars that I had accumulated, and, you know, uh, baggage I had accumulated because of my childhood, it all came back to me that moment. And I was irritated by the question, of course. It made me angry, frankly. And then the answer to it was, uh, of course, the next verse says, and God says to the angels in reply, I know what you do not know. I know exactly what I'm doing. And I thought, you know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> Don't you realize that this world is filled with violence and crime, and etc.? Why didn't you just make us all angels? You know, I was arguing with the scripture. Yeah. But I was definitely hooked. I wanted to see what the author, how the author answered that question. So I continued reading through the Quran, yeah. looking for clues and answers. And I know this interview has to be, can't be that long, but by the time I got to the end of the Quran, I had found what for me were compelling and coherent answers. So those discussion. answers that you weren't able to get through your young adult childhood life, now finally at the age of what? 27 or You got them in this Quran, in this yeah. last and final revelation, uh, the verbatim word of God, as we say as Muslims, in the Quran, you got the answers to all your questions. Yeah, I, I found for, for for myself personal theology that I felt was coherent, compelling, and consistent. Yeah. Uh, just so our viewers know, you have actually published a few books, but tell us the book. Uh, where can someone get it? The one that talks about your story in detail. So wants to go into the detail. What's yeah. it called, and where can they get this book? Uh, that book is called Losing My Religion. Losing My Religion. A call for help. A call for help. And it's in the first chapter. Where can someone pick this up? Uh, Amazon.com. Amazon.com? Yeah. Check out the book by Dr. Jeffrey Lane. Yeah. So now, because we're short on time, tell us, you accept Islam. Well, the point was is that... Okay, How long after that? Well, my daughter once asked me a good question. She said, okay, Dad, I, I see you answered your questions when you studied the Quran. But that, then why did you become a Muslim? Yeah. You know, I mean... That was my next... Why, yeah. why now did you become a Muslim? Right. I mean, just because you've answered some questions, that doesn't prove there's a God. Yeah. But the fact of the matter was, is, you know, as I was reading through the Quran, the more I began to find answers to these questions, the more I began to doubt my atheism. And the more I began to doubt my atheism, the Quran has a very powerful literary style. The more those verses began to move me. And there were times as I got towards the end of the Quran where I felt that I was in this presence of this tremendous mercy, this tremendous love and mercy and power. And I had these very powerful spiritual moments. And they would last sometimes for a long periods of time, you know, 10, 5, 10 minutes, it's, 15 minutes. It's hard when you, when you really get into that deep state. And these are the words of the one who's created you. Mm. It's like if you read a letter from your long lost mother that you haven't seen, yeah, yeah. and now you're reading, this is your mother, this is your creator. Yes, yes. So would you s suggest for anybody, obviously, who's seeking the truth, that if they come with this at, with an open mind, a humble heart, that they'll be able to see the same thing that you see, that this is from the Creator. That there's no way a man could have offered this book, or and, any men. Well, it depends on the individual, of yeah. course. Yeah. How, do you, how do you talk to this person who... Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I didn't really come with a humble heart. To yeah. I mean, uh, my position... I mean, if you do believe in God, and you do uh, accept that there is a God, then an atheist is a pretty arrogant position. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying atheists are arrogant, but you know, the, from the standpoint of a religious point of view, an atheist is an arrogant position. Yeah. And an open mind, well, I just picked it up out of curiosity. Yeah. You know, but it hooked me. Do you, you know? recommend now that someone obviously should read this book? 
Well, definitely, if you're looking for, you know, if you're if you're looking for. Or why should life, some, why should someone read this book? How would you answer that? Well, if you're searching for faith in your life, this may, may be the, the the place you'd like to. I mean, it's it's worth a look. Yeah. You know, I don't like I don't like to preach to people yeah. and proselytize. You know, that's just not my nature. Mm -hmm. Especially being an ex-atheist, I used yeah. to hate it when people used to, to kind of turn sell their yeah. religion to me. So I don't try to sell my religion. Absolutely, anymore. yeah. I just. You know, but for people, but I meet many people who are looking, who are searching, and I tell them if you are searching, then you know I could share these this much with you, and take it or leave it, or take it wherever you want to go. Do you share a lot of these points in your book? Yes. Okay, that's great. Tell tell us a few more questions, and then we'll cut out. Tell us how has Islam benefited you as a human being? How has it um, fit and completed your life? 